so today we're going to be reading the sequel to your devotion slashers x listener up in here now not getting straight to the story because we are on chapter five but we're just going to do a quick recap so that's why i'm currently in chapter four so don't mind me so <laughs> so basically if you guys do not remember which i completely understand basically yn and mikael and norman i believe ended up staying the night at one of the campsites or one of the campers that were like in camp crystal lake or something like that which of course she asked jason first and then jason asked his mom and then she said yes and jason was like of course you can and they ended up staying yay fantastic uh when they wake up wine decides to make some breakfast for them um hannibal's like fee 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 just randomly comes up because hannibal decided to stay at the house that you know he decided to go back and go sleep at his home because he thought okay crystal lake was a bee like so, like basically fancy words of saying nasty disgusting not good not worth saying basically a fancy word with that it was very surprising i was like oh, how dare you like damn that's rude and then yeah etc etc et anyways uh wine was like okay y'all so i got a piece peace and then now to go uh and hang out with jason alone walk around talk about other things and this is them basically talking about it and, you know, being all excited with each other, which, as y'all know, like, Jason's my favorite. Obs, obs, obs. Um, right before they start walking, like, through Camp Crystal, the lake itself, um, he gets super excited and, like, starts crying in happy tears that, oh my gosh, they're walking with me, I'm so excited. And I think it's absolutely adorable for and it's like, yay! And um, basically, we're just smothering him with compliments, which makes him cry. And we're like, no, don't cry. There's no need to cry. And then, oh, it was so cute, bro. I'm telling y'all. And then they just start thanking each other and then just, you know, flirty, flirty a little. Um, but after, after a while, you know, uh, they slowly start getting into a sadder subject, you know, just like, uh, <laughs> like, about like time management everything that we have to hang up with all the other slashers which is about let me count so there's freddie mikael hannibal norman and then jason there's about four more slashers she gotta hang out with and there's gonna be more added on to the list <laughs> i ain't gonna say anything though because <laughs> spoilers but um and then he's like i hate the others the bitches period and then we went a little low i'm not gonna lie and just trying to like kind of like get it away from it but at the same time like hey you gotta understand and they like and then just mention his mom and i'm like how dare how dare us how dare us right but after that they just start walking around the lake talking caressing you know loving each other and everything like that sadly later on as the you know as the sun starts setting she gotta go she gotta get her ass home and uh Voorhees is like uh oh, starting to get a little bit unstable getting mad but you know start understanding but you know you know what i'm saying it's much he's much more gentler than the other slashers about it so i'm like respect and then they make piggy promises etc etc et and they just start you know giving each other hugs goodbye kisses i wish but you know they just start saying goodbye to each other and then voila we're back at chapter five <laughs> um but apologies for that weirdly it, it was just weirdly placed i'm sorry but anyways end of that now we are officially in chapter five returning home when returning home was bittersweet seeing as you enjoyed spending time with jason and having fun while you did so it filled you with a slight sorrow guess you could say knowing you wouldn't be able to see him again until tuesday then after realizing how the other would feel about your panic promise a sigh left your lips not ready to face them all however going back wasn't as bad as it sounded for one you were going to spend time with norman this evening and once today was over you were going to spend tomorrow with mikael hanging out with each other whilst halloween took place so Instead, your expression twisted into a happy one, the bittersweet feeling beginning to fade. Minutes flew past like 
the pigeons in the sky as you quietly hum to yourself. The streets being strangely devoided of people and cars for some odd reason. Perhaps people were just preparing for Halloween early? He kept thinking about it, but you couldn't come to any sort of fitting conclusion. You grew even more confused when you spotted something float directly in front of you. Stopping, you eyed the thing suspiciously, wanting to get a clearer look. It wasn't high above you, but it wasn't necessarily your height either. Somewhere in between. This thing was casually drifting across the vacant road, moving too slow to be able to float. And what was this thing? A red balloon. You murmured under your breath, curious curiosity now controlling your tone, while you wondered why on earth a crimson-colored object such as this would be randomly dis discarded. That's strange. After a moment or two, you suddenly snapped out of your intense bewilderment, shaking your head as you decided to hurry on home. If I don't run home, if I don't return home soon, the others will be worried. You reminded yourself awkwardly, reaching the path that was just outside of town. Freddy and Mikael especially. And then, this is basically whenever, this is going back then, um, where Hannibal, uh, whenever, before she found out they were all killers and everything, uh, basically him telling her that he lives on the outskirts of town, etc, etc, etc. Um, so, yeah, just, <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Anyways, reaching the path just outside of town always reminded you of the first time you'd met, you first met Hannibal. A small smile spreading across your face every time. But all of a sudden, you jumped, not expecting Mikael to twirl around, to twirl you around before engulfing you into a very tight and overprotective hug. It's nice to see you too. You dryly spoke placing your hands on his shoulders and eyeing him with amusement. Using one hand to pull up his pale white mask, the other arm firmly wrapped around your waist, the silent stalker then pressed his lips against yours lovingly, his obsessive personality being made insanely obvious by this point. But regardless, it still made your heart flutter, so you kissed back and allowed it to happen, your eyes lightly closing while you enjoyed the moment, the fierce hold on you, the infatuating kiss. The adoring atmosphere surrounding the two of you, it was almost too much for you to handle. In fact, it was clear how much he cared about you. His desire to stay by your side, causing you to feel tremendously special. Well, that was until... Ah, oh, YN, you're home. Welcome home. Now feeling horribly embarrassed, you pushed Mikhail away and hurriedly faced Hannibal, startled by his swift appearance. H Hannibal, uh, how did you come here? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> you panicked, biting your lip and faintly blushing by him seeing the intimate kiss. Well, I do live here, he pointed out dry wryly, and after seeing Mikael disappear the way he did, I figured you'd finally returned. I see my assumption was correct. But how did you... I mean, I hadn't even reached the house yet. You didn't, you didn't even finish directing your question on Mikael as you turned to look at him with a puzzled pair of eyes and a perplexed face. No offense, but I could hear you coming from a mile away. <laughs> a few seconds passed before Mikael had finished scribbling down his response, handing it over, handing over his notepad to you the moment he was done. Oh. <laughs> he trailed off sheepishly, shifting from foot to foot while you gazed down at the ground and wondered what to say, not having a single clue on how to reply to either of them. When? <laughs> Hannibal d delicately called your name. Your body stiffening up when he softly held his thumb, held his thumb underneath your chin and tilted it up a little bit. Are you all right? I I'm fine. You shot them both one of your shy smiles, tucking a strand of hair behind your ear before regaining some of your normal composure and taking a deep breath. In that case, would you mind if the, just the two of us walked back home together? The psychiatrist politely requested, flashing you a charming smile in return and acting as pleasant as he always did. If only you liked to, however. I wouldn't want to force you like the others constantly do. Sure, I'd love to. Your nervousness died down once he removed his thumb from your chin, though the shade of scarlet that was coloring your cheeks was still lingering. But the others don't force me. I enjoy spending time with each and every one of you. Girl, I know you lying. You lying. <laughs> of course, my dear. I believe you made that quite clear. Hannibal chuckled <laughs> mischievously, the three of you walking back together while Mikael stuck to your side like glue 
and continued to glare at the other male. Good. You commented in relief, grateful as you all eventually reached the house. I wish you guys would get along more, though. I know that's a lot to ask for, but jeez, are you guys, you guys are just a hint. Wyan? <laughs> like, an overexcited voice cut you off. Norman bounded towards the front door and, thr and throwing his arms around you affectionately. Well, welcome home. Ah, thank you. <laughs> you, you, you replied warmly ruffling his hair before returning the hug and giving his body a sweet squeeze. How has your day been today? Everything okay? It wasn't the same without you. Norman stuttered bashfully, growing flustered by the tender treatment he was receiving from you. I, I missed you so, so much. And I missed you too, you, sm you soothingly told him, feeling happy due to not only, due to not only the hug, but the, the, but the missed you comment as well. Did you think of anything we could do together this evening? After all, you said you would. And then, um, basically, this is a flashback where we mentioned, like, whenever we were at Camp Crystal Lake with him, and we were like, why don't you just plan us for something to do or something like that? Just basically plan something for us to do that evening together. Yeah, anyways, back to now. Uh-huh, Norman cheerfully answered, his behavior bubbly and bright as he pulled out a a5 notebook and pass it over to you oh i'm so excited flipping it open your eyes widen a tad surprised by all the activities listed oh uh i like this one you held the notebook open towards the two of you and used your other hand use your other hand to randomly press your finger against one of the bullet points cooking cupcakes together i, I, I like that one too Norman sided with you almost immediately, clapping his hands together and becoming overjoyed. It's one of my favorites. Why don't we do it together after dinner then? You decided kindly, giving him the notebook back and headed, heading into the kitchen. It'll be a wonderful dessert to have once we're all done, don't you think, Norman? A absolutely, he merely agreed, following behind like a little, a cute little puppy and gazing, you, uh, gazing at you with complete and utter ad admiration. It'll be super duper yummy. May I ask what you're having for dinner, mi amor? Hannibal asked in a civilized fashion, entering the kitchen after you both and acting well-mannered like usual. I was just thinking about making something simple. You timidly mentioned, mulling it in over in your thoughts before thinking of something. You know, like, like tomato soup. Is that alright for you guys too? If not, I can always cook something else. Please, don't feel obliged to cook for us as well, dearest. Gently placing a hand on your shoulder, the calm male stopped you from opening one of the covers and stood straight behind you, his soft voice and mellow, his voice soft and mellow while he spoke. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go that far. I can do that. Excuse me. You needn't go that far. I can do that. Are, are you sure? You double-checked hesitantly, turning around to face both of your partners. I mean, I I'd feel sort of selfish if I only did my meal. I, I wouldn't mind tomato soup. Norman glossed over Hannibal's author and hugged your side cutely. In, in fact, I'd love it if, if you cooked it for me, Wyan. Uh, all right, then. You sent him a whole... F uh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. You sent him a feeble smile before d redirecting your attention entirely towards the psychiatrist. How about you? I appreciate the thought, but I can be rather particular when it comes to the culinary arts. So I think I'll create my own dinner for tonight. Hannibal denied in response, flashing you a sweet smile and trying to answer in a cautious manner. A and you say the others and I are the rude ones. <sighs> Norman muttered smugly, feeling clearly feeling superior to Hannibal for whatever reason, of course. Alrighty then, I don't mind. You brushed it off and turned back to the cupboards, ignoring, ignoring Norman's satisfied comment while you began preparing your own food. Okay, so what I would make for these people? Cereal con leche. Cereal with milk? Y'all like it? <laughs> yeah, so we is in chapter 6, Intense Intimacy. <laughs> Ooh, 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 can I, can I help? Norman begged in excitement, watching you place the ingredients on the kitchen counter and then wash your hands. I I'll promise I'll listen to you, Wyan. Well, I guess I personally think it would become rather crowded in here if you stayed, Norman. 
Hannibal disagreed with a younger boy in a patronizing tone, sending him a condescending smile and purposely acting high and mighty himself now. Especially since Wyan and I are preparing separate dishes for dinner this evening. W wait just a second! Norman snapped back, growing angrier by the minute while the psychiatrist's retali retaliation struck a nerve. Wyan said she was spending time this evening w with me! And I'm not denying that. I am, was merely suggesting that it might be easier on Wyan to make her meal if she had more space and less noise. <laughs> For real? Hannibal smoothly stated, his taunting remark causing Norman to clench his fist and twitch a bit, a little bit. Thinking fast, he moved in front of Norman and held his shoulders, giving them a soft squeeze whilst attempting to soothe him. Hey, 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 let's take it down a notch. You hurriedly interjected, I'm spending time, I'm spending this evening with you, so please don't worry. Cooking dinner won't take all that long anyway, so why not go and wait in the dining room for me? But, but, but. Oh my, are you planning on starting an argument with our sweet YN? <laughs> Hannibal cut across Norman's hurt stammer and sided with you, his false pacifist persona causing even more envy. How unthoughtful. I, I wasn't trying to start an argument. Then why aren't you listening to her? Because I, I was going to... Excellent. Then I suppose we'll be seeing you and Mikael soon. Fine. And with that, Norman spun around and swept and swept out of the room tears of hate sparkling at the edges of his eyelashes while he showed they showed just how much he despised the opposite slasher wait norman you tried to call after him where he's washing through your veins when you receive no response please don't fret and hello mio he'll be fine <laughs> Hannibal dismissively pushed Norman sulking to the side and stood next to you, shaking his head at the other male's childish outburst and behavior. You were about to reply and give your opinion on what just just happened when Hannibal's left arm excuse me, when Hannibal wrapped his left arm around your waist and used his other hand to delicately caress the side of your left side of your face, his thumb brushing over your skin as though it was porcelain. Besides, he mumbled intimately, you haven't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. Uh, what brought this on all of a sudden? You stuttered a tiny bit as you asked, your heavy blush from earlier returning whilst you wondered how to reply properly. No reason, to be perfectly honest. Hannibal innocently responded, a sweet smile lining his face as he carried on holding your waist and cupping the side of your face gently. I just didn't think it was very fair. Wasn't what isn't very fair. You repeated his words curiously, now grasping his shoulders while you waited for an explanation. Why, the amount of time he constantly spent with the others. <laughs> the psychiatrist answered possessively, resting his forehead against yours and therefore forcing your heartbeat to bounce out of control. I mean, nowadays I barely even get to talk to you, whereas people like Norman, Mikael, Kruger, and Jason always seem to get the opportunity. But then why didn't you say something? You asked in confusion, the romantic gesture clouding your thoughts as you attempted to calm down. My presence isn't all that everybody's making it out to be, you know. Why, of course it is. He obsessively spoke, trying to change your mind whilst he wanted to direct your attention away from Norman and more so towards him. You're not just some possession, like you seem to think you are. Mikara. <laughs> Mikara. And then something that we have to go translate. So I'm going to go ahead and screenshot this and we're going to figure out what the fuck he said. Because, uh-uh, we are finding out today. Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> because we are finding out today. Okay, we're going to go ahead and translate. Hold up. Okay, just translate this and I'll be to English. Okay, and then we just, boom. My dear, you are our treasure, and I love you. That's it. Um, what does it sound like? We're about to find out. Mia cara, tu sei il nostro tesoro, e io ti amo. So, yeah. There you go, everyone. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, yeah, that, that's what it means, y'all. <laughs> Anyways, continuing on. <clears throat> Upon hearing that, you grew all hot and bothered again, your cheeks glowing a bright burgundy a second time. I I love you too, you bashfully whispered, now throwing a shy smile his way while you enjoyed his hold. And for that, I am filled with gratitude. 
Hannibal warm replied warmly, his sadistic side sparking up as he secretly noticed how you were feeling. So he decided to take it a step further and lightly press his lips against yours. Perhaps he was jealous of the way Mikhail hel had held you earlier. Whatever it is, this behavior between the five of them needed to stop, and it needed to stop now. Then again... <laughs> Hannibal's alluring kiss made your eyes widen from surprise, not expecting such a sudden move to arise from him. So you returned the flirtatious kiss and let your eyes flutter shut, adoring the moment as you briefly forgot about preparing your evening meal. Your heart pounded. His touches were tender, and the compassionate hold was caring and close, showing just how much he loved you. Minutes passed before you snapped out of it, realizing that pretty soon you had to focus on your food and creating said dish. So, breaking away a tiny bit, a smile spread across your face as you try to recompose yourself, where you're breathing a little e uneven whilst you recollected your thoughts. I have to focus on making my food now, you softly decided, loving the male opposite of you. <laughs> I'd rather eat tonight if that's all the same to you. <laughs> I understand. Hannibal agreed in a charming fashion, his hand running through your locks and stroking it with the utmost of care but if you need any sort of help please don't hesitate to ask thank you i will your smile grew bigger at how kind he was being giving him an affectionate hug before beginning the tomato soup and starting it from scratch thankfully you were able to cut the tomatoes place all the ingredients into the pan and roast them stirring them after 15 minutes as hannibal worked on his own behind from behind then, you completed the soup by blending the previous brawl mix together, adding a very heavy, a little heavy cream and sprinkling it with seasoning, hoping it would be good enough for Norman, heck, maybe even Mikael would try some. Actually, you could, you could take some over to Camp Crystal Lake and cheer Jason up somehow. Yeah, yeah! <laughs> Once you were done, you wrapped, Jason's, you wrapped Jason's in foil and brought the three bowls for yourself, Norman, and Mikael, in the into the dining room, your hunger increasing. Oh, why in your back? Norman cried in relief, leaping up and snuggling into your arms with an extraordinarily tight hold. I am indeed. A laugh slipped <laughs> through your lips while you placed the bowls on the well-laid tap dinner table, and I brought food with me for myself, for you, for Mikhail, everyone. But but Mikhail doesn't eat. No, the dark-haired male protested right off the bat, casting a dark and cold glare at the stalker next. I know. You brushed it off breezily, hugging the back, hugging back before you sat straight down. I just want to see what he thought of my homemade soup. That's all. And maybe he's tired of always standing in the corner. Speaking of which, Mikhail stood by your chair and took a spoon. <laughs> Stunning Norman, whilst the stalker did what you wanted and dipped it into the soup using his other hand to push the bottom of his pale mask and sip at the food you made. So, is it alright or... You inquired hesitantly. The new notepad he'd, that he'd gotten and passed it over to you made your heart swell with happiness, not expecting Miguel to enjoy your homemade cooking. I love anything you make. It's delicious. Thank you for thinking for, of me. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Holding the notepad close to your chest, you found his words and support incredibly cute. Con con <laughs> content with your relationship between everyone. C can we make cupcakes afterwards, please? Norman pleaded desperately, reverting back to his begging behavior once, w once more while eating your tomato soup. Sure, you replied in a friendly tone, turning your attention back to your dinner and therefore satisfying your hunger. All right, I see you, girl. I see you, material girl. What's your name? Okay, Shanana. <laughs> but now that I think about it. Are we not gonna talk about that red balloon that we saw like one or two chapters ago? Y'all should. I'm not gonna say anything, but y'all should know who who might be next. So you know, just like y'all should know. Y'all should know. <clears throat> no spoilers. Anyways, um, chapter seven. <clears throat> Cooking cupcakes. I was about to say cooking companions, but no. <laughs> I'm not playing that right now. <laughs> After finishing your food, you and Hannibal cleared the table. Both cleared the table. Norman doing the washing up. Wilts Mikael never stopped stalking you. Not even for a second. Of course, 
that was to be expected from your silent significant other. And the moment you and Hannibal were done picking up the plates and coultery, Norman tugged on your arm and practically dragged you into the kitchen, the silent stalker shattering your steps as you did so. The shy boy, on the other hand, was insanely overexcited, stammering just a little bit more than usual due to just how happy he was spending time with you. You seem to be happier than usual. You brought up dryly, amused by Norma's cute and adorable attitude. Could this be because you like to you like to bake some cupcakes together before bedtime? Well, I. Norman stuttered with scarlet shaded cheeks. Your playful teasing causing his fluttered behavior to increase at a rapid pace. I, I guess I wouldn't mind baking some. Well, that's a relief. You were, you smiled warmly pressing your lips against the side of his cheek before faintly pulling away. For a moment, I thought you were having second thoughts, you know, because you were behaving more skittish and hesitant than usual. Of course not! Norman cried out, panicking at your accusation and feeling embarrassed at your affectionate peck on the cheek. It just... Well, I... Come on, I'm just cheesing. You stuck your tongue out and lightly poked his other cheek, enjoying how timid he was being willed to open one of the covers above the kitchen counter. Am I really that scary? No, that, that's not it. He anxiously argued, his reaction making you laugh just a little bit. <laughs> that, that's, not, that's not it at all. Sure it isn't. You teased with a small smirk, ruffling his hair before taking out the necessary ingredients. Oh, shit. Whoopsie, I actually hit my mic. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Why in? Norman wailed in response, looking a tad da downcast by your reply. Uh, why would you ever think that? I would never be afraid of you. I, I love you. Relax, relax. I was just kidding. You quickly com comforted, wrapping your arms around his body while wanting to cheer him up somehow. Let's have some fun together. Yeah? M yeah. He, the prince of milk cuddled into your chest with a small smile, growing happier as his uncalled for stress faded. As his uncalled for stress faded. Faded. I, I can't wait to cook cupcakes together. Then let's get to it. <clears throat> he commented softly, giving his body a gentle squeeze before pulling it, pulling out the dessert cookbook. We should both wash our hands first, though. R right. Norman gave a sheepish nod and waited for you to wash your hands first, washing his hands right afterwards. Okie dokie. If you could preheat the oven, I'll fill the, the this cupcake tray with cases. You calmly planned out. Mikael gazing at you from the corner with an intense stare hidden underneath his mask. The way we'd be working together. That way we'd be working together, okay? Th that sounds great! Norman agreed, happily clapping his hands with each, with each other before doing what you wanted him to do. I, I can't wait to get this started! Me too. Once you flashed him another kind smile, you turned your attention to one of the trays and, and, excuse me, and tucked 12 of the cupcake cases into said tray, completing your objective in less than five minutes. I, I can whisk the butter, the butter, the golden caster sugar, and, and the eggs, you know, until it's light and, and fluffy. N Norman bashfully offered, bringing out the blender and setting it up in advance. Sounds good? Giving him a thumbs up, you carried on with the next few steps, helping him add the vanilla a extract, a pinch of salt, and a small bit of self-raising flour. I'll just stir the mixture with said spoon, and then the spoon into the and then spoon them into the cases. Oh, this is so much fun! Your bubbly boyfriend explained out of nowhere, curling suddenly, curling his arms around you from behind and resting his head on your shoulder. I'm just so happy. This is fun, isn't it? You cheerily spoke, holding his hands with your own, whilst you tenderly stroke them. We should bake things together more often, shouldn't we? Mm-hmm. Norman beamed joyfully, his eyes glittering with delight as he agreed immediately. I would love to spend more time with you, Yn. Same here. Turning around, you swiftly kissed him on the lips, causing the boy opposite to opposite you to grow even more excited by your actions. Mikhail, however, became unbelievably jealous, losing control of his temper and shoving Norman to the side, away from you. Hey! Norman hissed at him angrily, glaring at the other killer with vicious hate. W what's your problem? As to be expected, Mikael didn't say anything, staying silent as always. Whilst he decided to slam Norman against the wall by his throat and bringing out his trusty kitchen knife. <sighs> Mikael! He, you groaned in expert exasperation, disliking at how lighthearted the atmosphere had twisted into one of 
anatis me. I can't say that word. In hostility. Let him go. The pale masked face shook his head slowly, tightening his grasp and therefore it's stretching you out. If you don't let Norman go right now, I won't spend time with you. I won't spend Halloween with you tomorrow. You understand me? You lashed out at Mikael sharply, your frustration reaching its peak as you waited for him to release Norman and calm down. For real. Feeling frustrated himself, Mikael flicked his head to the side and dropped Norman to the kitchen floor, showing no guilt about what he'd done whatsoever. N Norman, are you alright? You fretted worriedly, bending down and holding his shoulders with your hands before helping him stand up. I'm fine. Please don't worry about me, YN. Norman feebly blushed, a weak smile spreading across his face as he delicately rubbed at his neck. Of course I worry, you fearfully replied, bringing him into another firm hug. Because I care about you, Norman. I told you back at Camp Crystal Lake, and I'm telling you now. I love you. YN. <laughs> like, Norman's eyes widened with surprise, his son expression showing just how much he'd appreciate what you said. Now, Miguel. Can you please back off and leave us alone? You wearily sighed, wanting the other slasher to give you and Norman some space to finish baking the cupcakes. Whipping out his notepad, the mute male decided to write his report. <laughs> Ret excuse me, not report. <laughs> Retort, passing it over to you a minute or two later while waiting for you to read it. <sighs> Fine, but you'd better spend time with me tomorrow because this isn't fair. Okay, okay. You hastily di dipped your head as a nod and returned the notepad, wanting to soothe Mika down as fast as possible. I promise you, alright? See, I don't like that. Like, see, I care, right? But we're sad. I feel like, to me, we're satisfying their needs more than they're satisfying ours. Makes sense, and that. It, it's 60 40. It needs to be 50 50, because I, I don't like it. Like, come on now. Come on now. This could be way better. Way better. Mm -hmm. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. Relationship problems, am I right? Anyways. After he gave you a stern nod of his own, the killer left the kitchen altogether, not even watching you anymore due to his overwhelming jealousy aimed at Norman. Phew. Now then. Want to carry on with the cupcakes? You quizzed the quiet boy in a light tone, hoping to resume the happy attitude. You bet. Norman answered with a happy-go-lucky voice, watching you spoon the mixture into said cupcake cases and then place the baking tray into the oven. Oh, I can't wait to decorate and ice them. Believe me, I think I can tell. A soft, a, a soft smile lined your face a second time, and so the two of you began to wait for the cupcakes to bake. You and Norman chatting about different things <clears throat> was a bright and bouncy mood from earlier rose again. I can't wait to either. Look, 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 the cupcakes are ready. Norman tugged on your sleeve with his usual childlike excitement. Your partner's cute char characteristics causing your heartbeat to flutter completely out of control. Looks like they are. Ruffling his hair, you threw him another smile and took the now fully baked cupcakes out of the oven. Placing the tray onto the kitchen counter as you and Norman both carried on the following steps. The following recipe instructions. Alright y'all, so we're in chapter 8. Chapter 8. Delicious desserts. <laughs> and there! You happily hummed, finishing up the last of your icing via a piping bag. That completes my half of the icing. How are you doing, though? Need help with decorating or anything like that? N no thanks! Norman responded shyly, completing the rest of his icing with a cheerful smile spread across his face. I'm, I'm done with mine now. Would you like to see? Sure, I'd love to. Clasping your hands to together you glance over at norman's decorating and oohed in delight absolutely loving the design of of them and how cute the cupcakes looked in general and why was that because he whirled the swooing pink icing to resemble rose petals on each and every one of his the cupcakes giving them a very sweet and soft look oh norman you lightly explained are they okay do you ask he asked in an anxious voice of t tone of voice placing the piping bag down on the kitchen counter before turning to totally face you I, I wouldn't want to ruin tonight's dessert or anything why would you ever think that your decorating is way better than mine see you praised warmly pointing at yours and tucked a strand of hair behind your ear i, I think yours are beautiful 
Norman timidly protested, his kind compliment causing your cheeks to change to a faded pinkish color. You decided on creating yours a cream-colored icing topping, piping it into a swirl before sprinkling them with rainbow sprinkles. But Norman's? Norman's would look way cuter. I don't know what to say. You just look adorable. You hugged his side and sent him another sweet smile, pleased by how his rose petal cupcakes intertwined with your rainbow sprinkled white ones. C can we taste them now? Norman grew even more excited and practically begged for you to agree to his request. The shy boy staring at said cupcakes with pride. Why don't we take them into the dining room first and then we can? He replied in amusement, placing them all into a few plates before pushing the tray and other things used straight into the sink. I'll, I'll carry them. It's the least I can do, Norman offered with an adoring attitude, taking two of the plates and walking out of the kitchen alongside you. Well, that is very much appreciated. Thank you. You gratefully spoke, entering the other room and getting immediately pulled into a tight hug by Mikael. Mikael, don't force Ryan into a hug so abruptly. It, it's rude. Norman scolded the silent slasher coldly. Growing agitated as he placed the cupcakes, the cupcakes plates down on the dining table, the dining room table, and tried his best to keep his temper under control. Y'all need, y'all need some anger clap management for real. For be fuck for real. Jealousy isn't attractive either, you know. Hannibal re-entered the dining room and instead re, pre reprimanded Norman, shaking his head at the two male, two other males in the room. As I've previously stated, so why don't the both of you cease this immature behavior? Can't everyone just lay off? You sighed in slight despair, breaking free of Mikael's grasp and finally being able to place your couple of plates down on the table too. All I want to do is eat the yummy cupcakes and get, then get ready for bed. Is that so much to ask for? Of course it isn't. Me floaty. <laughs> We, it says basically says my flower please excuse these two and their v v v juvenile don't you start either you cut Hannibal off sternly sarcasm dripping from your tone as you knew he start in, on his underlying false wholesomeness and manipulation start the pleasant psychiatrist shot you an innocent smile before approaching you with a gentle expression, cradling the left side of your face with his right hand and resting his forehead against yours seductively. And just what would I be starting, Wyan? <clears throat> you know exactly what. I took those psychology classes for a reason, you know. You rolled your eyes and raised your eyebrows, attempting to ignore the burgun burgundy blush that had overtaken your cheeks. Those classes have taught you well, it seems. He spoke in an agilitic tone of voice, his amusement steadily increasing from every minute that passed by. Hannibal! Norman snapped at him jealously, gritting his teeth while tears pricked at either side of his eyelashes. Let's just all take a chill pill. Fun fact um, my um, counselor, like the specific one I've had for years that I've talked to for so long, actually made like a whole little tiktok thing that says in the front a chill pill and when i tell you i used to eat those so much but since we only do online now i'm like damn i wish i could see those i wonder if they, she still has those i'm wondering but it, it was so funny <laughs> you really declared placing your hands against hannibal's chest and feebly pushing him away please because i'm tired of this Mikael gave a curt nod and backed off, giving you some space instead of being smothered. Whereas Norman just decided to sit down at the dining table and wait for you to take a cupcake. So once you take in a seat and reached out towards one of Norman's cupcakes and took a petite bite, <laughs> took a petite bite, definitely enjoying how delici delicious it tasted, Hannibal, however, didn't take a cupcake at all, simply sitting beside you and flashing you another one of his charming smiles. It was rather sweet to be honest, because even though he didn't seem to be interested in said desserts, he still wanted to be by your side and stay close to you. Mm hmm they're, they're super duper yummy. Norman praised the freshly baked cupcakes with an elated expression, taking another huge bite straight afterwards. Just what I expected. <laughs> he laughed a little as the tension in the atmosphere trickled away. Trinkled away. And that's all thanks to you, Norman. M me? 
And Norman squealed awkwardly, his face in now entirely flush at this point. Why me? Because if you hadn't written all those ideas in that notebook, then we wouldn't be sat here now, eating them. You brightly brought up, leaning over the table just a little bit and kissing him delicately on the side of his cheek. So thank you. This has been a ton of fun. No problem. The dark-haired boy's ability to speak became more and more difficult due to his flustered state. At any time. So your embarrassment is cute, too. <laughs> a second giggle <laughs> left your lips uh, whilst you toyed with him a tad, finding your timid partner to be extremely adorable as you messed around. I think it's growing rather late now. Don't you agree, Wyan? No Hannibal interjected politely, touching your shoulder and eyeing your face with a concerned gaze. Oh, you think so? You mulled over what he said thoughtfully, slowly standing up a second or two later. I guess you do have a point. But, but, but wait! Norman tearfully ex cried out, throwing his last remaining cupcake back into his plate before jumping up himself. Y you can't go yet. Y you can't. Um, why? Is something wrong? You suddenly panicked, growing alarmed by just how stressed and emotional he'd become. Aren't you a little tired yourself? Sleep me it means nothing to me. <laughs> Sleep is for the week. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Norman shot up, shot back stubbornly, clinging to you with the utmost of desperation as he threw Hannibal yet another ice cold glare. Y you do. Nothing means more to me than, than you. Norman. <laughs> you trailed off with wide eyes, not having a clue what to say while you hopelessly stood next to him. I, I don't understand. We usually sleep together regardless. So, what's the problem with sleeping tonight? This is merely a case of him showing his true colors, dearest. Hannibal mentioned smoothly, standing on your other side as Mikael hugged you from behind. His true colors? And just what is that supposed to mean, huh? Just like this bitch. <laughs> you, defense, you defensively challenge, feeling somewhat protective of Norman and how bashful he was. I'd prefer to discuss such pessimistic matters during the morning or afternoon. Not this late, at least. The psychiatrist responded in a well-mannered voice, his calm personality showing quite plainly. Fine, but I would like some answers. You retaliated coldly, breaking the hug for Mikhail and making your way towards the stairs. Okay? Understood. Hannibal dipped his head as a nod and followed you upstairs, a small smile lining his face whilst he grew amused by your attitude. And... I'm guessing this means sleep well, mi amor. I think we translated this earlier. Um, I, I hope you do sleep well, too. You replied with flushed cheeks, letting your the dark-haired male hold one of your hands in his and plant a very sweet kiss upon the top of your fingers pleasantly. And with that, you entered your bedroom, stiffening up when you spotted a certain someone leaning against your bedroom wall. Oh. Oh I'm sorry y'all but this is the last one we're gonna read for now I'm sorry I'm sorry I probably made myself a promise and I must complete that promise anyways um sorry for leaving y'all first on that cliffhanger and second of all what do you guys think is gonna happen next what are your thoughts on the red balloon anywho I do hope you guys did enjoy this like subscribe and hit that notification bell for more amazing videos guys Honestly, I love that we made cupcakes and that we're getting a bit more, you know, romantic stuff from Mikael, a little bit from Norman and some from Hannibal because I know damn well Hannibal's a romantic man, like full on, like, mm, it, it's amazing, <laughs> like it's amazing. Um, Mikael overreacting and so is Norman by a large amount. That's why, like, I love Norman sometimes, but I don't at the same time because I'm like, be fucking for real. Like, I'm about to go to bed, and you're, like, practically shitting bricks about me going to bed, you know? And then I get it, like, the cupcakes, I probably would eat my cupcake 100% before I even attempt to go to bed. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, mm. You know, it's just a bit like, whoa, did not expect that. <laughs> but, I mean, I do like Norman, but... You know, there's some things that I feel like could be improved. But I think the main reason is because there's just 
more than one slasher because if it was just him i think these issues wouldn't come up as much but you know at the same time it, it's just really mixed you know it's really mixed but it is what it is it would be a different case for each an individual slasher i'm glad freddy didn't bother us until until later on so we'll we'll see um just let me know what you guys think is gonna happen next and who do we see in our when we enter our bedroom let me know let me know in the comments down below <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> anyways your girl's gotta sadly go your girl's gotta go now officially bye and peace